Hello everybody, Anthony Calhoun live here in Atlanta, Georgia. We are live here on Big Game Bound. Radio Row, the place to be for all the action, all the hot topics buzzing around the NFL and Super Bowl 53. Take a look at the scene right here. I mean, it is awesome. If you want to get a pulse of what's going on, the NFL is right here on Radio Row. There's over 200 stations here radio, some TV as well, all hanging out here in downtown Atlanta talking about the big game. We've got the Patriots and the Rams ready to do battle here on Sunday at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And so we got a lot to get to here uh, this afternoon on Big Game Bound. Our big topic today, we're talking about, guess who, number 12, Tom Brady. Is he the greatest quarterback of all time? We want to hear from you. you, you got to weigh in. Go to Twitter. Get on social media. The hashtag is Big Game Bound. Big Game Bound. We want to hear from you. We'll give some of your thoughts to all the folks watching right now on this webcast. I want to bring in my sidekick, JB, here for day two of Next Star Nation here at Radio Road. JB, we had such a great time yesterday. I know we got a lot going on today. There's JB right here from our sister station, WFLA in Tampa. Of course, I'm from Wish TV in Indianapolis, all a part of Next Star Nation. But the hot topic, JB, Tom Brady, do we think he's the greatest of all time when it comes to quarterbacks? Uh, we're really still talking about this. Huh? Yeah, this we are. is still the conversation. It is, yeah. It really is. I, I don't even – all right, so I'm going to go first here, AC. Is well, that what we're doing? Well, you can do that. But, hey, before you do that, let, let's tell the folks why we're talking about this today. Because yesterday we had Chris Sims. He, he was on the show. Chris Sims, former NFL player, now part of the uh, Football Night America for NBC. He was on the show. And I started asking about Tom Brady. I mean, here's Tom going to his, his third straight Super Bowl, trying to make it six Super Bowl wins in his career. And I asked him, he just started talking about, does he think Tom Brady is the greatest of all time when it comes to quarterbacks? Well, take a listen to what he told me yesterday. Come on, it's it's unreal, his career achievements. I will not say that Brady is the greatest quarterback of all you time. You will not say that. I will not. Gre Why? Brady, he is certainly top five. I'm not going to make it just about rings, though. That's okay. not fair. Okay. I think okay. if Aaron Rodgers was on the Green okay. on the New England Patriots, he would have some, they would have the same rings. amount of rings, yeah. too. Okay. Right. So okay. Okay. he's awesome. People in New England hate me because I have that take. And <laughs> it's not a take. It's just it's just what I feel, and I've been around it for a long time. You're going to tell me yeah. uh, my dad's better than Phil Simms is better than Dan Marino because he's got one more ring than he does? No, that's I like a lie. Dad, though. Oh, um, hey, I, listen, I got my opinion about that, and I'll weigh in on what I think about Tom Brady being the greatest of all time when it comes to quarterbacks. But that's the hot topic. We want to hear from you today on the podcast here. We're here from 1 to 1.30 Eastern time. That's the hot topic. Hey, we want to bring in our special guest here. We want to get his take on this. This is, of course, Solomon Wilcox, former NFL player, a big time broadcaster. Join us here on Big Game Bound. Solomon, my friend, thank you so much for joining us. I really do appreciate you joining us on Big Game Bound. Thanks for having me. Greatly appreciate it. Well, hey, let, let's talk first about this. Let me get, let me get your opinion. Tom Brady, uh, do you feel that he's the greatest quarterback of all time? Yeah, I think with the consistency in terms of the longevity and then to play at such a high level he's now playing in his ninth Super Bowl in 19 seasons um, <laughs> and yeah. should he win he'll be the only quarterback in NFL history to win six Super Bowls there's only been two other players in the 99 years of yeah. our league to win yeah. um, six Super Bowls neither one of them are a quarterback one is Fuzzy Thurston the other is Herb Adderley and so, yeah, I think it would set him apart in that class of quarterback. Because at the end of the day, quarterbacks are judged on winning. Mm -hmm. And winning championships would be chief among them. That's right. You know, I, I kind of agree with you on that. How impressed have you been seeing what he's been able to do as such? You know, you know I wouldn't want to get into it's age. It's an older age. It's, it's older, okay. Yeah, it's an older age. But, but for him to do what he's been able to do yeah. at 41, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, right? And not only that, he's doing it on a team that's not chock full of superstars. Right. It's not like he's an older guy riding on the shoulders of others. Others are riding on his shoulders. Yeah. He's the one that's lifting the team and carrying them to victory. Now, the other guys are playing their role, there's no doubt. But he has a great coach, but he brings an energy to this football team that allows them to play above their level. Uh, when you think about it, he's their hardest worker and he's their best football player. 
when you have those two things, you have the greatest leader. Yeah. So Tom is not only a great player, a great quarterback, he's a great leader. Yeah, as we look around here at, at Radio Row, and we take a scene here at Radio Row, I mean, this, this whole setup here, is, this, this is what, you know, we're trying to get the folks back <laughs> watching on, on the websites of just what it what the feel is like. But when you look around Radio Row, it, it's unbelievable, right? Oh, the it's scene. a spectacle, there's no doubt. The media crush here is an international crowd. Um, Sky Sports yeah. is here from the UK. You have people from all around the world, every corner of the country and beyond. That's how much this has grown. I played in the Super Bowl in my second season back in 1988. It was nowhere near this. In fact, I don't think the media yeah. we had for the entire week can fill up a quarter yeah. of this building right now. I so mean, it's big time. Yeah, if you if actually can take a look here, just around the, the scene here, <laughs> I mean, you got everybody here. And, and every, of course, all the hot topic is all about the big game. And, and we got the Rams, we got the Patriots. Let me get your take on this Rams team. Everyone is talking about uh, the fact they got the youngest coach ever to coach in the Super Bowl, the second youngest quarterback in Jared Goff to be in a Super Bowl. Uh, do you give them, can, can they beat the Patriots? Oh, absolutely. Because the Patriots team is not one without flaws. Mm. This isn't these those dynamic Patriots teams that we have been used to seeing. We've seen this team lose this year. Yeah. We've seen them lose badly. Mm -hmm. Right? And they're the ones who come in with an 11 and 5 record. Yeah. The Rams are 13 and 3, and I think the NFC conference is a tougher conference yeah. to emerge from. And so, no, they can win and if Dominican Sue and Aaron Donald really show up like they did against Dallas, like they did against New Orleans, yeah. they can wreck shop against a stationary quarterback. Tom Brady's not mobile. You know where Tom's going to be. <laughs> right, yeah. Now, he hadn't been sacked at all in their two postseason games. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I mean, so, barely tapped. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that tells you something. Yeah. If you can't sack them, if you can't touch them, you can't beat them. <laughs> that's right. And that, that's the only way to, the Rams got to win. Those two guys have to really show up in a big way. And so does Todd Gurley. Yeah, we're talking to Solomon Wilcox, who just joined us, a former NFL player, a big-time mm -hmm. NFL broadcaster. Does a wonderful job at that as Thank well. You. And um, I, I want to get to, before we get you out of here, why, why you're here. But before we do that, you know, when I think about Tom Brady and what he's accomplished and Bill Belichick, I mean, just kind of put that in perspective, folks. Eight straight years to the AFC Championship game. Three straight years to the Super Bowl. What, four or five of the Super Bowl? Do you think we'll ever see a dynasty like that? Ten straight division titles. That's right, yeah, yeah. Was that I like mean, nine straight years, 12 wins or no, more? This is crazy. Yeah. No, I don't think we'll ever see this. The, the league, the way it's all set up, is you're not supposed to achieve this. Yeah. Where the worst team gets the highest draft picks and the best team gets the lowest draft picks, yeah. okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, when you win a lot, right, yeah. you lose players in free agency. When you win a lot, you have infighting and jealousies and arguing and bickering. You have coaches that leave and go on to coach against you. Those coaches come back to rejoin this team. So everything they do sort of defies the structure of how things are supposed to turn out. And so I just don't know that we'll ever see this again. Um, if we do, it might be 100 years from now. Okay. Hey, JB, we have any questions? Anyone weighing in on, on social media at all about this whole deal with Tom Brady, the greatest of all time? Solomon says he thinks he is the greatest of all time when it comes to quarterbacks. Yeah. And uh, what, Anything at all? Nothing yet? Okay. Now, I'll tell you yeah, this. Yeah. I, used to, yeah. I used to say, nah, I had to leave room for Joe Montana. Yeah. And Joe Montana played <laughs> in four Super Bowls. Okay. He won all four, four. of them. Yeah. Now, Tom is at a point where he's won five. But to play in four Super Bowls, as Montana did, and never threw an interception in one of them. That's amazing. So I had always given Joe the nod. But I think we're now to the point where Tom has got five Super Bowl rings, <laughs> yeah. maybe six, and all these other accolades. Yeah, yeah. I think we can now give him the nod with Joe's respect. Okay. JB, anything at all? We do. We do have a question, or actually a comment. <coughs> yeah, Tom, Solomon, yeah. this is the, the comment from yeah. Mike Hammer on Twitter. Yeah. Not even sure how this is a debate still. Brady is clearly the greatest of all time without question. Yeah. Some great quarterbacks of generations, but all time it's him. To have success as consistently as he has with the longevity as well, not a good three to four seasons his entire career playing at that level. Has how about that? Big that? game what down you, from Mike you, Hammer. All right, thank you, Mike. We appreciate it. It sort of echoes what I just said yeah. in terms of how great 
Tom Brady is, and <clears throat> I think he's, you know, he grew up sort of rooting for Joe Montana growing up in the Bay Area. He was a big Joe Montana fan. Yeah, yeah. I think if you were to get them both in the room, they would both have to agree Tom Brady has exceeded that. But I was, you know, doing a radio um, show just earlier, making the rounds. Yeah. And I said, you know, Tom isn't even the best quarterback in our league anymore. Now, he's the greatest of all okay. time. Who are you going with? But, but think about it. Last week, he was a D4 offsides away from throwing three interceptions. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and Patrick Mahomes Holmes. lit it up in the second half yeah. of that game. Yeah. He didn't throw three interceptions. He didn't yeah. even throw two. Great. And he had 5,000 yards, 50 touchdown passes. This, is this year. MVP Only two, most two likely. Quarter. He, yeah. He's the best quarterback in our league. And he, and, he so, better than and, he, and he represents the future, yeah. Okay. In fact, I, I think, based on this season, I think Russell Wilson surpassed hmm. Aaron Rodgers. Because they, to me, play a similar game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Russell Wilson plays an error-free game. Yeah. It just plays so well and so in yeah. control. I think Russell Wilson has surpassed. And, and listen, this isn't about over one's career. This is about the here and the right now. And we know Patrick Mahomes had a season. Yeah, he did. Uh, I mean, so yeah. right now, he and he finished that second half was lights out. Yeah. You get the sense that he got the ball in overtime. Um, they'll probably He'd be playing he in this game, yeah, okay? I agree. I agree. In fact, he'd be playing in this game if D4 not offsides. <laughs> so that's just yeah, it. And sometimes away. the best quarterback in a game doesn't win that game. Yeah. Because I think Drew Brees is the best quarterback in the NFC Championship, but he ain't playing today because yeah, it takes a team. Yeah to win championship at the championship level. I think you put it in good perspective here. One more question. We have one more deal here, and then we got to get, get more question here. To Last qu to Solomon, uh, question we'll for, him get out of here. Yeah. for Solomon from John Walton on Twitter asking one minute ago, Solomon, he wants to know where Drew Brees ranks on your list of all-time quarterbacks. Wow, well, I'm going to tell you right now, he's in like that top five for sure, top three along with Peyton Manning and, and, and Tom Brady. Do you know he and – he and Tom left the Big Ten right around the same time. Yeah. I think maybe one year apart. But up until last year when JT Barrett became the Pac-10's all-time leading passer, guess who was the Pac-10's all-time leading passer? Not Tom Brady. It was Drew Brees. When this game is over, guess who's going to be the NFL's all-time leading passer? Drew Brees. Guess who owns the best completion percentage in a single season, multiple seasons? Drew Brees. Yeah. Quarterbacks that have thrown for 5,000 yards in a single season. Now we can add Patrick Mahomes to that list. Brett Favre, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady. Drew Brees has done it five times. Not once, five. No other quarterback has done it more than once. So Drew is in that conversation. In those championships, he's got one, but he doesn't have the multiple. But he is definitely in the conversation. Okay, Solomon, before we let you get out of here, uh, so why, why are you, I mean, I know you're here obviously for the game, but why, why, why are you here hanging in radio? Well, you know, I'm here doing some work on behalf of a great company by the name of Vericell. They've got a product called Macy, M-A-C-I, um, and it's about cartilage repair. Over 12 million people go to the doctor every year with some kind of knee pain. Mm -hmm. Over half of those end up experiencing some kind of cartilage damage. But what if I told you this company, through their stem cell technology, can grow your cartilage? and replace the damaged tissue with healthy tissue from your own stem cells. And it can help you avoid cartilage deterioration to the point where you're rubbing bone on bone and then you ultimately have to have knee replacement surgery. It's a cutting edge technology that is sweeping the nation. Many college athletes are having it done. Many former NFL and Major League Baseball and NBA players are now having it done. It has replaced anything that's out there on the market, and it's the future of technology in terms of orthopedic medicine. So you can go to Macy.com, M-A-C-I.com, to find a Macy specialist in your area. All right, Solomon. Thank you. Great seeing you. So All right, man. thanks for having me. Have a great week, okay? Okay, we appreciate we'll do. We'll let Solomon get out of here. I know he's got other radio shows he's got to talk to and podcasts as well. So thank you so much, Solomon. Okay, so the debate still going on. Solomon, he, he thinks that Tom Brady is the greatest of all time when it comes to quarterbacks. We want to hear from you here as we are live on Radio Row here in Atlanta, Georgia, as we get ready for Super Bowl 53.
three between the Patriots and the Rams. So like last night was was media night and JB, my man, it's it's, it's always a great time. You, you can, you're going to see anything and it's really a time for these players to kind of sit back, lay back and just really relax because starting today, as a matter of fact, there's press conferences going on with both teams as they focus in on the game on Sunday at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. But JB, last night, I know our Next Star crew had some great stories of all the action that took place, right? I think we set a record. Yeah. I think we set a record yeah. with how many players we interviewed. 68, I believe, interviews we got. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. In incredible. And awesome for the fans, too. 10,000 yeah. fans being there. And one of the more interesting interviews, I think, that took place, AC, was with Brandon Cooks, obviously the former Patriot who has caught passes from Tom Brady, and he knows that there's a lot of conversation going on right now about whether or not Tom Brady is the greatest of all time. And Brandon Cooks talking a little about it. Should we, should we hear from Brandon yeah, Cooks? Yeah, let's hear from him. Let's hear from Brandon Cooks, current Los Angeles Ram, former New England That's Patriot. Right. It's special. It's beyond special. You know, I don't know how old I was when he first won his Super Bowl, but for him to still be here now, uh, you got to tip your cap to that. And a guy that comes to work every single day, his competitive nature uh, is special. And, and I learned a lot from Tommy. All right, so you hear him there. Much respect for, for Tom Brady. You know, he was just one of the guys there at and Brandon Cooks to get the opportunity there to spend some time with the media and you hear what he had to say about Tom Brady. But um, we want to also flash back to media night with our very own um, Lily Zhao from our sister station in Green Bay. I know she had a chance to spend some time with the players at Media Day. And JB, this story, folks, you're going to love. Take a look at this for the scene and the atmosphere at Media Day from last night. I can't try that one, love. I'm, I'm let, let me show you, okay? Let me show you. Wait. Super Bowl Media Day. Mm. I'm not hearing no ums out of that. A place where pretty much anything goes, even eating a cricket. How was the cricket? Uh, kind of crunchy and salty and like smoky. The crickets or whatnot, but I, I always used to wonder what escargot was. Um, and I probably would never try escargot, but that was probably, you know, the wildest thing I'd ever ate. Media Day has become a place where off-the-wall questions are the norm, giving the players a chance to show the media and their fans an entirely new side of them, including their dance moves. Okay, all right, that's it. Dance move, man. I mean, I'm a good slow dancer. I guess. My slow dancing? I don't know. Yeah, kind of just swaying. And red carpet poses. Okay, yeah. So if I was at a red carpet, you know, and I was walking down, and I saw a camera here, I'd be like, "What's good?" You know what I'm saying? Or like, come here, like. You know, so I'll, I'll probably do something smooth. But even with all the fun, there is time to be serious. After all, this is a dream many of these players have had since they first picked up a football. Since you've been a little kid, you know, you've always uh, you know, dreamed about playing in the NFL. And you know, as you get older, you get, you know, you want to play varsity football and you want to play at a big college. And, and now you're in the NFL and, you know, being here and having a chance to play in the Super Bowl is, uh, is pretty special. So now that Media Day is officially in the books, it's time to get serious and focus on the main reason they're here in Atlanta and that's to hoist a Lombardi trophy. <laughs> you gotta love it. Media day, always a great time. JB, I mean, those those stories, those players, I mean, they, they do anything on media night, right? They'll do anything. <laughs> uh, I, I don't even know how much of Rob Gronkowski's interview actually pertained to football. I think he was talking more about his favorite foods and what yeah. he likes to do in his yeah. free time and yeah. joking around with all the reporters, too. He was yeah. making fun of the reporters' questions and saying, you know, Bill thought told me there were going to be some tough questions, and uh, I think he said <laughs> yeah. he was a little disappointed. So it's really yeah. fun. The atmosphere is really lively and really yeah. cool that 10,000 fans filed in the State Farm Arena last night to join in and be part of that experience. It gets bigger and bigger every year, and we're part of it here yeah. in the media. But now the fans are part of it, and that's what makes it really cool as well. Yeah, if you're just joining us right now, we are live here on Radio Rolls. We take a look at this scene here. I mean, there continues to be interviews after interviews of so many folks here, former players, coaches, you name it. They're all hanging out here in Radio Row. And yesterday we had some good insight on the New England Patriots. We're going to welcome in a member of our Next Star Nation Super Bowl team, Kevin E. Martin, who joins us for all the latest with the Rams. She comes from our sister station out in Las Vegas. Kevin E., always great seeing you. I know you're so tired this morning. You did all that media day stuff last night. You just saw the story there from Lily. Uh, that was a cool experience, right? Been a part of media day. It was awesome. I mean, people try to 
tell me to try to explain it and you can't. You kind of just have to be there to understand what Media Day is all about. It's outlandish, it's off the wall, it's crazy, it's nuts. I mean, like you said, they ask the most crazy questions. <laughs> Nothing pertains to football. There's guys eating crickets, there's guys in sombreros. It's insane. Yeah, it is It is a wild time. Hey, so our hot topic today is, is Tom Brady. Is he the, the greatest quarterback of all time? And so... Let me get your opinion on that. And folks, say, hey, by the way, if you've been watching this whole time, I'm going to weigh in. So be patient. I am going to weigh in on what I think. But what, what do you think? Definitely. Um, yeah. Especially if he gets the six, six ring. I mean, it cements him as the greatest of all time, right? Yeah. Um, what he's done uh, is just incredible. It's bar none. So, yeah, I think you have to go with Brady as the GOAT. All right. So the story here, folks, about Kevin, she has a great connection with the LA Rams. All right, so let's start first with their quarterback, the 24-year-old Jared, yeah. Jared Goff. Um, what, what's your connection with him? So when I got my start in the business, I started uh, for a high school sports show, Cal High Sports Bay Area, um, and Jared Goff was a junior at Marin Catholic. Yeah. And, um, you know, he actually was a pretty big name. I mean, he was pr pretty highly recruited. Um, and where we started covering him was the Elite 11. Uh, the Lead 11 camp, uh, yeah. the Trent Dilfer. We actually saw Trent last night at Media Day, yeah, and I, I got yeah. a great soundbite from him talking about, you know, what did you see in Jared Goff back in high school? And you know what he said? He said it was just his innate ability to throw the ball, and that's what we're seeing now, yeah. right? The kid is what? He's skinny, he's lanky, but he has an arm, arm. an accuracy. So, yeah, only yeah. 24, only been in the league three years. Yeah. And, um, I mean, his – confidence in the pocket and his ability to move outside and um, check down the options it's he's wise beyond his years I mean it, he's he has a, a really bright future in this league it's gonna be exciting to see and I got to see it all get started in high school It's really cool so are you surprised I mean to see him in the Super Bowl at such a young age um, and early in his career, I for should sure, say. Th this early. Yeah. Um, I never. It's you know when you see an athlete and you just know they have it. You can't describe yeah. it. He had it. When we would go cover him in high school, I mean, there wasn't. I mean, he he could throw the ball, but you know nothing like stood out. He was skinny, lanky, but yeah. nothing like stood out. Like he wasn't an athlete. But we were like, he's going to make it. Like, everyone knew it. There was something about him. And um, obviously went on to Cal and had a good career at Cal. And Did okay. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right. We're talking to Kevin e. Martin, a part of our Next Star Nation team. Of course, she covered Jared Goff in high school now. She's part of here of our sister station in Las Vegas and covering the Super Bowl for Next Star Nation. So we know you got that connection there with Jared Goff. But there's something about you and quarterbacks I know, with right? the Rams. So tell the folks a little bit about the other connection. This one's very close to home. Yeah. So the backup quarterback, Sean Mannion. Mannion, so, yep. Yep. So my dad, his mom, my dad is his mom's uncle. Wow. Or if you want to look at it another way, his grandmother and my dad are brother and sister. So, um, yeah, we grew so he's up. he's ultimately a cousin of yours. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah we, a close well, cousin. Yeah, too, we yeah. call each other cousins. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. He recently got married, and we all went to his wedding. And uh, we're from Pittsburgh. We're big Steeler fans, and that was when Marcus Sweeten was on the, yeah. the Steelers. Obviously, went to Oregon State, and <laughs> everyone's like, "Oh, you know, my family's just crazy like that." Yeah, but yeah. Um, no, it's been really cool. And another connection, which is crazy. I mean, everyone's talking about the Bay Area connection between Tom Brady and Sean right. Mannion. You mm -hmm. do know, or Jared Goff. You do know sure. Sean Mannion grew up in the Bay Area as well. Was not aware of that. Yes, yeah. he went to Foothill in uh, Pleasanton, California. Actually was born in San Jose. So there's three quarterbacks. All of them Bay Area. Yeah. yeah. Brian Hoyer, the backup for the Pats, is from Ohio, so he ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not going to work. But yeah. the three, but the other uh, four quarterbacks yeah, here. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. That the Bay Area. So, so uh, what's it like? So have you, did you, have you spoken to yeah, him? Yeah, I ran up to him yesterday. You know, I was, at media day, right? Yeah, at the okay. media day. And he, so I, I, I embarrassed him. Yeah. I embarrassed and what, him. What was that moment like? I just gave you? him a big hug. I, I mean, we're, we're proud of him. You know, yeah. it's. It's really cool. He had a, a very successful career at Oregon State. I mean, he still holds um, the season, all-time season touchdown record, 37. He threw for 37 touchdowns, which is still a school record. He holds the Pac-12 uh, passing yards, over 4,000 passing yards in a season. Uh, I think he broke that his junior year. So, I mean, 
he had an insane career at Oregon State, um, and he's chilling right now as the backup quarterback in the NFL at the Super Bowl. Well, right. I mean, can yeah, life get any better? Better than that, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be great for your family, and yeah. I know for you personally. I mean, granted, you're here on assignment and, and covering the Super Bowl, but to see someone in your family get a chance, regardless if you're the starting quarterback, but you're still part of that that roster, mm-hmm. to have a chance to win a ring and to get the Vince Lombardi Trophy, that's got to be special. Yeah, and his dad, John, is a high school football coach, and Sean actually played for his dad when they were at Foothill in Pleasanton. So it's, I think it's really, really, really special for John to see Sean here on the biggest stage. Obviously, you know, I, he, he taught him everything he knows, you know. Yeah. He was his yeah. high school football coach, and here they are on the biggest stage, and it's really, I think it's a really going to be a really special moment not only for John and his mom Inga you know but for the entire family to see him take the field on Sunday. Uh, I love it we're talking to to Kevin Martin uh, who is uh, cousins to the backup quarterback of the LA Rams Sean Mannion what a story it is okay so obviously we know the big game second place at Mercedes-Benz Stadium have you had a chance to go inside yet? No. Okay so (laughs) we got a chance to check it out Uh, the the place is is incredible I, I was blown away I mean it's stunning you name it It has everything in it, so we're going to give you a sneak peek about it. And they also have a a really good deal when it comes to food and beverages uh, at the stadium. Let's watch this right here. All eyes will be on Mercedes-Benz Stadium on Sunday, the site of Super Bowl 53, and the building is stunning. 30 stories tall, retractable roof, seats over 70,000, and the city of Atlanta can't wait to show it to America. There is a tremendous pressure um, to be the home of the Super Bowl and be in a beautiful new stadium. Um, It's the big game of the year. Millions and millions of people are watching it. And I can tell you for the weeks and months leading up to it, there's so much effort that goes into this production. Scott Jenkins is the general manager of Mercedes-Benz Stadium. He says the biggest highlight for fans when they come to the stadium is this massive halo video board. The world's largest scoreboard, 58 feet high by 1,100 lineal feet around. If you were to stand it end to end, it'd be taller than the tallest building in Atlanta. The stadium is a very intimate building. Seats are close to the action, but it isn't just designed for watching football. Scott says he expects the halftime show with Maroon 5 will be a big hit. We can just amplify whatever we do here, whether it's football or soccer or a concert or the halftime show, just with all the amenities we have, the sight lines we have, that huge halo board the lighting effects that we're able to do. And when it comes to purchasing food at the stadium on Sunday, it doesn't get any better than this. People come here for the Super Bowl. It's a $2 hot dog. It's a $2 refillable soda. It's a $5, 12-ounce domestic beer. And we've got great food offerings. All right, so so how about that, Kevin? $2 for a hot dog? at the Super Bowl, but you know what, this is what they do, the Falcons, they do that every week of Falcons game, it's, it's unbelievable. That's amazing, I am such a foodie, <laughs> I'm like, I do not turn down free food, and the fact that there does, are, right? yeah, I know, right, the fact that there yeah. are $2 hot dogs just yeah. chilling, that's awesome. It is, hey, by the way, in case you're wondering, speaking of food, so this is the, the home, the headquarters of Chick-fil-A, yes. right, and so the company has made it very clear they're sticking with their policy. They do not open up on Sundays, and they won't be open up on Super Bowl Sunday. So there you have it there. All right, before we wrap up, big game bound. I've got to give you my, my thoughts on, on Tom Finally. Brady. Hey, by the way, JB, did we get your opinion? Did you say that Tom Brady's the greatest of all time? What did you What did you say? Get him in there hooked up. What did you, what did you say? I don't. I don't know. Is this is this really a conversation? I want to hold on. I'm gonna. I'm gonna really preface this. I'm gonna preface this. Okay? okay. The resume. The resume for both of you two to dissect here. Five-time Super Bowl champion. Four-time MVP of those five Super Bowls. Three-time MVP. Fourteen Pro Bowls. And guys, he's 41 years old and showing no signs of slowing down. If he goes till, I mean, I think he's the greatest of all time right now. Yeah. And mind you, I grew up in of New all, York. So of that's all hard. football. Of all football, wow, better I than Jim I, Brown. I, I think wow. I, I think that he's he's pretty Find much Find the quarterback there. position. Um, mm. I, I think that the longevity is what makes Tom Brady Brady really special. Uh, all right. I, I feel better calling him the greatest quarterback of all time. I, I, I understand that I might rattle some feathers calling him the greatest player of all time, but again, he's 41 years old. <laughs> he's back to the Super Bowl again. All right, what are you going with? Just what are you? You're going with greatest all time. <laughs> I mean, I mean, AC. How, I mean, how old are you? How long? How, how, how I mean, long are you going to be going for, man? 
<laughs> Don't put it on me. Don't put it on me. All right, hey, real quick, and I'll give my opinion here. Did we get any any um, any more Twitter out there? Any more comments from anybody that we can just uh, let's check? So check and I'll, out I'll before bring we up shot here, before we wrap things so up here. Can, you can see uh, John Walton says he loves the show. Fox oh, appreciate 48, that. Thank uh, you. Saying uh, is Tom Brady the greatest of all time, and they're trying to get responses out there. So we are monitoring okay. everything on with the Big Game Bound hashtag. Nothing really okay. substantial in the last few minutes. All right, so here's my deal. Um, without a doubt, 100 percent the greatest quarterback of all time. I mean, five Super Bowls. I mean, come on, no other quarterback has won more than more than him. Not only that, the fact that he was able to win to go to eight straight AFC Championship games, four or five Super Bowls. I mean, what else do you need to say? And and let's talk about as Simon Wilcox, who joined us earlier, just all the, the, the division championships they won in the AFC East. Granted, I know it's the AFC East, but still, the the, the titles they won there. Um, the, I think it was nine straight seasons where they've won 12 games or more under his direction. No doubt, no debate, everybody. I'm telling you now, no debate. The greatest of all time when it comes to quarterbacks, it is Tom Brady. And I'm based in Indianapolis, and you know how the Colts feel about the Patriots. So for me to say that, uh, it, it's, I'm saying a whole lot because oh, we oh, wouldn't say that in Indy. Yeah. Hold on. I might let yeah. you off the hook, though. Yeah. Greatest player of all time. I, That's I what you're saying. I don't know if I'm going greatest player because he's playing the quarterback position and as far as, you know, the, the, the struggle that they have to go through opposed to a running back, opposed to, you think about someone like Jim Brown, and we can go on and on and on debate that, but we don't have time to debate that, JB, right now. I don't think we do. But I wish if, we had more time. But you I know what? We if you, more time. you know, we still can debate it. Here's the deal. Just hashtag us at Big Game Bound. Big Game Bound. Hashtag us there, and um, we'll, we'll try to weigh in some more of your, your thoughts and, and some of your questions there at our our Twitter hashtag for that. Okay, everybody, hey, thank you so much for watching Big Game Bound. Kevin, thank you Thanks so much for, for joining me. us. We appreciate that. Go get some sleep. I know you are dead tired. Uh, you can check out her reports uh, on this website throughout the week here on Big Game Bound. I'm Anthony Calhoun, JB, my sidekick here with as well. Big thank you to Ashley for doing a wonderful job there with all the great shots here in Radio Row and a big thank you to Haley as well and our entire crew. Don't forget, this is must see, must see tomorrow, 1 o'clock Eastern Time to 1.30. We are here live on Radio Row and we've got some surprise guests coming your way. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you about one of them, Tony Dungy. He'll join us live here on Friday, right here on Big Game Bound. He'll join us. We'll talk about his new book and get his prediction um, on who he thinks is going to win the Super Bowl. A guy who's won a Super Bowl before. We'll talk to him and so much more coming your way right here on Big Game Bound from 1 to 1.30 Eastern Time. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you back here tomorrow.